All right, so last time we created a graph in Excel. Okay, let me, read, let me redo that graph for you. So what was our data? Zero. Okay, so I'm going to retype this data, this graph right here, 0 0.51, 1.52, 2.5. Oops, 2.5. And zoom in on that so you can see better. And then the distance is 1.33, 2.14. So that's time. Distance 1.33, 2 2.14. Oops, uh oh, I got the wrong file. 3.08, 3.94. and 4.93 and just to give you a quick review to create a chart what you need to do is to go to insert scatter plot uh, just data points no lines connecting the dots this is what excel tries to give you and most a lot of times Excel is not going to give you the right chart the right so what I usually do is I go back to over here chart tools I click on design and then select data and then delete remove select this one and then remove the data that Excel plotted and then I'm going to add the data that I actually want to plot okay so I'm going to add for my x-axis my time and for my y-axis the distance and I'm going to hit OK. And this is the chart I want. Uh, if you remember, if you're just showing one thing on your graph, you don't need a legend. And if you want to draw the best fit line to your data points, all you have to do is right click on one of the points. And then you click on Add Trend Line. And then you select Linear Trend Line. And if you want, you can show the equation of the line on your chart. Now. So this is where we left out last time. You can modify this. You can add titles to your chart. So if you want, you can lay out your chart. You can put axis titles. So for a primary axis, I'm going to type, uh, this is going to be time in seconds. And for my Y axis, uh, vertical axis, I want it rotated. I can put distance. Type B in centimeters. Okay. And I can make this a little smaller. Make this a little farther away from the label. All right. So, uh, like we said last time, it's better to, instead of actually just using X and Y here, to label this so that this is D. And the slope, the unit for the slope is the unit for y, which is centimeters, the unit for divided by the unit for the x-axis, which in this case is seconds. So 1.8 centimeters per second plus, instead of x, we're going to put time, t, and 0.384 would have the same unit as y, so that's 0.384 centimeters. So that's a better way of describe, describing what your graph in terms of a linear equation. It actually has the correct units. Now, one thing you need to be able to also do is figure out the correct number of significant figures for your slope and your y-intercept because Excel will not necessarily give you the correct number of significant figures. So that's, that's what we talked about in the next part of the activity of the handout. Okay, so linear regression. The slope and the y-intercept for the equation shown in the trend line may not have the correct number of significant figures, okay? 
And so if you want to determine the correct number of significant figures, you use the linear regression tool of Excel. Okay, so what you'll need to do, these are the steps you need to do for that. You find, click data on your menu, and then click on data analysis, and then regression. Now, if this is not available, you'll have to add it in, go to your file, uh, go to your uh, op file options, and I'll show you how to do that in just a short while, okay? And then you specify what your X values are, you specify what your Y values are, and you can also tell Excel if you want to force your Y-intercept to zero, it will do that. Otherwise, it will calculate the Y-intercept for you. And then you specify where you want the results to be shown, and then you hit OK. And your output is going to look something like this. But let's just go ahead and do that on Excel, OK? So what was, what, what was I supposed to do at this point? I'm going to click, oops, I'm going to click on Data up here, all right? And over to the far right side, there's a, there's a data analysis button right there. Click on data analysis. And then a pop-up menu will, uh, a pop-up window will show up. And down here, you scroll down, you find regression. Click on regression, okay? And for the first blank here, you specify where your Y values are. So I'm gonna click there. And I'm going to highlight my Y values. It's going to be B2 to B6. Click back on the on this uh, point, on this icon right here to bring back the window. And then select my X values. So click here and then highlight the X values. And then I tell it where I want my results to be. So it will either create a new sheet for me or I can specify where I want it put on the same page. So I'm just going to put it on the same page. I'm going to point to where I want it. I'm going to put the results down here somewhere below my uh, data. Okay, so it's going to be in cell col column A, row 9. So cell A9. And then once I've done that, I'm going to click OK. And these are the results. Okay, starting from cell A9, these are the results of the uh, linear regression. The process of linear regression is simply a matter of finding out what the slope and the intercepts are. So, look, you f they found Excel has found that the slope is 0.384. I mean, the intercept is 0.384, just as, just as it found it to be 0.384 when it did the linear trend line, and it found the coefficient of the x variable to be 1.8. So, the coefficient of the x variable is 1.8. That's your slope. That's the number that comes in front of X, okay? Uh, and the nice thing about doing a regression like this is if you look at the next, the row next to the slope and the intercept right here, next to the slope, okay, your slope is 1.8. Next to the slope right here, you have the standard error. That's the uncertainty in your slope. So your slope, the uncertainty in your slope is 0 0.0329. So you can stop at 0 0.03. So, or 0 0.032, if you want an extra digit, that's fine. So, you can report your slope then as 1.80 plus or minus 0 0.03. So, that, the first non-zero digit in your slope is, in your uncertainty, is in the second decimal place. That means your slope has to be reported to the second decimal place. All right? So, I need to fix up my label on my chart so that I have an extra sig fig there. I'm going to write 1.80 there. It's not just going to be 1.8. Now, if you look at your y-intercept, the number next to it is 0 0.05. That's the standard error in the y-intercept. That means 0 0.0545. Your first non-zero digit is in the hundreds place again. So this y-intercept, which is 0.384, okay, should be reported to the second decimal place. So you just report it as 0.38. So your y-intercept then is 0 0.38 plus or minus 0 0.05. So what you need to do then is go back to your linear trend line and edit this to just say this is plus, plus 0.38, two decimal places. So that's how you determine the uh, significant digits in your slope and in your y-intercept. Okay? All right. 
So let me just do one more uh, chart for you. And it's a, it's a, it's a, so this is what we have now. 1.8 centimeters per second times time plus 0.38 centimeters. Okay, that's your uh, equation of your straight line. Now, let me just show you. Uh, actually, let's do activity five. All right. Once we have determined the linear equation that describes the relationship between the two quantities, then we can predict what y would be if we know the value of x. All we have to do, since we know that y equals mx plus b, is you plug in the x, you plug in the slope that you found from your linear regression or from your trend line and plug in the b, the y-intercept. Now, if x happens to be between the lowest and the highest experimental x values that you did in the experiment, then the calculation of y would be called an interpolation, as we talked about before. So if your data points are like this, okay, and you're trying to find the value of y for a point that was somewhere in between your data points, then that's interpolation. And if it's beyond, then it's called extrapolation. All right, so let's go back to our data from the last activity. So we got our linear equation to be d equals 1.80 centimeters per second times time plus 0.38. So if you look at your data previously, you'll notice that, um, let's see, at 0 0.20 seconds, let's see if we got any data at 0 0.20 seconds. We, do, we don't have any data at 0 0.20 seconds, okay? So in other words, if I were to ask you what would ha what would have what would have I measured at 0.2 seconds if I were to do a measurement at 0.2 seconds? So you draw a vertical line to the trend line or the best fit line, and then you go horizontal, and you'll you see that you'll probably get a distance of about 0.8, some somewhere close to that. If you were to if you were if you, if you would have done the measurement at point two but since you did not this is the outside the range of values that you measured okay beyond so you're doing here what's called extrapolation so uh if you go back at point two then you're going to say your distance is going to be one this distance is going to be 1.80 centimeters per second Oops. times our time in this case is 0 0.20 seconds plus 0 0.38 centimeters all right so what would that be 1.80 times 0.2 let me pull up the calculator here 1.8 times 0.2 is 0.36 plus 0.38 it gives me 0.74 right so this will give me 0.74 so the predicted distance at 0.2 seconds would be 0.74 and you can see that that's consistent with what we have on the graph over here oops what we have in our graph okay um, at 0.2 seconds, okay. Uh, your, so this is this is one. So that's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and this is your one second. You can see that the predicted y value, the predicted distance, would be about 0.8. So we calculated it in fact to be 0.74. All right. Now, what if your Time is one point. At, let's let's do this. Uh, one point four seconds. What would y have been? Well, you go back. You can see that the one point four seconds. Again, you did the experiment. You make a made a measurement at one second. Okay. And you made a measurement at 1.5 seconds. You did not make a measurement at 1.4. So if you want to predict what's at 1.4, you do this, right? And basically what we're saying is we're going to plug in 1.4 seconds for time, right? 
multiply by the slope, which is 1.80 meters per second. You'll notice your unit cancels out seconds. And then you add the y-intercept, which is 0 0.38. So that would be the distance at 1.4 seconds. Since 1.4 seconds is within the interval of values that you measured, you're doing here, what you're doing here is called interpolation. Okay? So interpolating the values, we get 1.8 times 1.4 plus 0.38 that gives us 2.9 and you can see it's very close to 3 okay so you can graphically determine determine the value of y for a given x so you can do graphical interpolation you can just draw lines on your graph or you can use the equation of a straight line and just plug in the numbers to get the more precise values okay uh, let's see do we have sig fig issues here 1.8 times 1.4 is how much? 2.52. Okay. So that should only have, this is three sig figs, that's two sig figs. So this should only have two sig figs. So I'm going to say it's 2.52, but I'm going to keep that extra two there just uh, because this is an intermediate step. And then I add 2.52 plus 0.38. 0, 9, so I have 2.90. I know my 5 is my last sig fig here, 8 is my last sig fig here, so I round off my answer to 2.9. Okay, so that's how you do interpolation and extrapolation. Now, uh, if you go further down, what if you want to predict what x would be for a given y value, okay? So this is the opposite now. What we did here, if we knew what x was, we, we can predict what y is going to be. This time, we're going to predict what x is given the y value. Then all you have to do is rearrange your equation. So if y equals mx plus b, we can solve for x. x is going to be equal to... You subtract y, b from both sides, so y minus b, and then divide both sides by m. So x is going to be y minus b, and divide by m. And this again, the same thing. You just plug in the values. So if d is 1.0, okay, what would my x be? I'm going to see. I'm going to say that. Okay, go back to this equation right here. This was the equation we had earlier. So if I plug in d equals 1.0, how can I solve for time? I'm going to say time is equal to d minus 0.38 centimeters over 1.80 centimeters per second. Okay, so I just plug in my d. So time equals uh, distance is 1.00 centimeters minus 0 0.38 centimeters divided by 1.80 centimeters per second. So what's 1.00 minus 0.38? Calculator. 1 minus 0.38 is 0.62 centimeters divided by 1.80 centimeters per second. So 0.62 divided by 1.8 gives me 0 0.34 centimeters, two significant digits, ah, 0.34 seconds, I'm sorry, 0.34 seconds, centimeter, uh, centimeters will cancel out. So you would expect the time to be 0.34 seconds when d is 1. Let's verify that that's in fact the case on our graph. So if you go back to your graph, what was it again? 1 second, 0.30, uh, 0.34 seconds, 1 centimeter. Okay. So at 0.34 seconds, okay, 1 centimeter. So this is 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0.8, so 0.34 is over here. And you can see that the distance traveled at that point in time 
at 0.34 seconds, the distance that was traveled was one centimeter. So again, this is outside the range. So what you're doing here is extrapolation. Okay. So uh, that's what you need to do. I'll leave the rest of the questions for you to, the rest of the table for you to figure out. Okay. And whether it's interpolation or extrapolation. Now, oftentimes you may have to plot, uh, draw trend lines to different parts of your data. So here's an example of a data set you might get if you were doing what's called a freezing point depression experiment. And so what you would, the, exp the lab experiment that I got this from is where I have a, um, a, a liquid, okay, water, for example, with salt in it, solution, and I put it in an ice bath, uh, a salt ice bath, so it's very cold outside. I stick a thermometer inside and I stir it. I monitor the temperature versus time. So this is temperature right here versus time. So the general trend looks like this, and then it goes below zero, and then it suddenly jumps up, and then uh, it, it levels off, okay? So in this particular experiment, uh, you would determine what's called the freezing point of the mixture by extrapolating the trend from the last set of data, you extrapolate it so that it uh, intersects the trend in this first set of data over here. So this temperature right here that you're getting is what you would call the freezing point of your mixture. Okay, so I'm going to have to do two trend lines here for my data set. Uh, a curved trend line for curved trend line for this part of my data right here on the left, and a straight trend line from this part of my data on the right. So the technique for doing this in Excel is to add each date uh, to break up your data set into two. Okay, so that you can do a trend line for each data set separately. So I already have these on Excel tabulated for you. By the way, I am recording this on Adobe Connect, which you should be able to get to uh, from through. It should be able to view from your fire with from within your firewall at school. So once I'm done with this, I can give you the link to that, and if you want to review how I'm doing it, you, you can uh, access the video from school. But I'll also be putting this video up uh, on YouTube later. Okay, so. Uh, let me show you how this is done. So I've already entered the data over here. You'll notice the last six data points, one point num at, at 13 seconds, at 13 minutes to 19, 18 minutes over here. If you go back to that, uh, and that's one, two, that would be these data points right here. So I'm gonna draw I'm gonna draw a straight trend line, straight line trend through that, and then ex extrapolate backwards, okay? This is called forecasting in Excel, forecast backward. And then my first uh, my first 12 minutes, I'm going to draw a curve through it. The best way to draw a curve, curve trend line is to just use a polynomial. Okay. Uh, so let me show you how that's done in Excel. So what I need to first do is insert a chart. So insert a chart, again, scatter plot. All right. And this time, Excel has learned its lesson. It did not suggest a graph for me, so I have to tell it what I want to graph. So I'm going to select my data, add my x values. I'm just going to plot the first 12 data points for now, so I can draw a curved trend line through it. Right? And my y values would be the y values, the temperature for these 12 data points. And that's what I have right now. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of that legend. And then I'm going to draw a trend line through these data points. I'm going to make it curve. So I'm going to right click on one of these points, add trend line. And if you want to do a curved line, a curve through your uh, trend to your data points, uh, your best bet would be a third order polynomial, a cubic polynomial. OK, so select polynomial, polynomial of order three. Okay, and you'll notice it draws a smooth curve through your data points. Your data points are not on a straight line, but by doing a polynomial through it, you can draw a smooth, nice smooth curve through it. I don't need the equation for that line, so I'm just, for that curve, so I'm just gonna, I'm really just interested in drawing a smooth curve through it, all right? Then the next thing I'm gonna do is 
add more data. So click on select data again. So select data. I'm going to add another data set. I'm going to add the last six points. So select range. Okay. Oops. okay select my X values. It's going to be from the 13 to the 18 minute mark. And then the Y values. Say the Y values from 13 minutes to 18 minutes. And hit OK. And OK one more time. And that's your data, the last six data points. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on it, add trend line. I'm going to do a linear trend line through it. OK. And there's my trend line. Now I want that linear trend line to go all the way back to, OK, so this starting from 13. I want it to go back maybe all the way to the five minute mark. So I'm going to forecast it backwards. So 13 minus five would be eight. So I'm going to right click on that trend line. See, when you hover over it, it says series to trend line. So I can right click over it, format that trend line. So I, I get back the options for the trend line. Right here under forecast, okay, there's a, there's a place here where you can forecast. I'm going to forecast backwards, eight seconds backwards. Right? So now my trend line's been extended eight seconds further back. I really don't want it to cross, for, cross beyond uh, this point right here. So maybe five forecasting backwards by eight is too far. So I'm going to just forecast it maybe seven seconds, seven minutes backwards. OK, so there it is. All right. So and that's how you can do that. Now, this since all of these are really just one data set, uh, you really shouldn't be representing these with different markers. So what I can do is you can change the marker style for this to make it the same. So you can, uh, if you select your data, if you if you hover over your data, uh, let me see. It's kind of hard to do now with with the trend line over it. Okay, there. So format the data series, and you can change what markers you want for that. But I'd rather. So you can change your style for your markers and your fill so that both set of markers are the same. The data points look the same. But a, a trick that I find useful is to just add another data series. This time, add everything so, so that you'll cover up all of these original data points you put in there so they all look the same. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to, again, design, select data, add another series. All my X values are now included, okay, from time zero to time 18 minutes, and all my Y values are now included. And now I hit OK. You'll notice everything's been covered up, okay, except for that square wasn't co perfectly covered up with the triangle, so I just I still need to change that. I'm going to format that. Instead of making it a triangle, I'm going to make it uh, I'm going to make it a square or a, a big circle. Okay, I can change the size of my markers. I can make those big circles. And those are kind of big, but uh, you get the idea. I just covered up all those data points that I have on there. Okay, okay question, how do I get the decimals on Excel? Uh, okay, decimals where? In in the tape, in the data entries or in on the chart? Graph. Oops. If you want, oh, okay, go ahead. In the data entry? Okay. Uh, you mean you, if you want to put extra decimals? You say if I say this 2.4, if I want it to show as 2.40, is that what you're trying to say? Or these numbers, like if I want to make this to be 0 0.500, you right click on it and then you format your cell. Okay. And then you say, okay, this number. I want it, I want it to have two decimal places or three decimal places. It will show you how it's going to look like. 
So for example, if I want it to be three decimal places, and I can up have that apply to over a, a bunch of cells at the same time. So right click on the cells, format cells. General format means you let Excel decide. So if there's any trailing zeros, Excel will just drop those. So if you really want Excel to show the decimals, even if it's a zero, then you select number format and then you specify how many decimal points you want. So if I just want two decimal places here, you can select that and that's how the data will look. Does that answer your question? Okay. Okay. It's got messed up here. Here you go. So now I have two decimal places. All right, so I think uh, I pretty much covered the most important uh, things you need to know for now, especially when you're doing your graph for your um, for your uh, calorimetry experiment because you're going to be forecasting backwards. You're going to be extrapolating to the time of mixing. If you remember, I mentioned last time that you are going to take data points at 30 minute intervals. So you're going to plot temperature versus time. And you're going to get data points every 30 minutes. And then, oops, sorry. You're going to get data at every 30 minutes. And then after mixing, the temperature is going to drop. And then you're going to have to establish that. So this is, let's say this is the five minute mark right here, the time of mixing. And then your data points right here, the long-term trend, you have to extrapolate that backwards. So you do a trend, a, a linear trend line to that, extrapolate until you hit the time of mixing right here, and this is gonna be your final temperature, okay? And you do the same thing with your initial data points, you extrapolate to the time of mixing to get the initial temperature of your water, All right? Now, you may wanna move your axis here so it's easy for you to actually see what the numbers are or you can just draw grid lines, okay? Like I did in the handout. Uh, here I had grid lines, so it makes, makes it easier to read what that temperature is. So this is negative, for example, this is negative one and that's negative two. So I know that this point right here is about negative 1.4. 1 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, 1.8. 1 so that's negative 1.4 right there. So you can do grid, grid lines on Excel. Okay, so just play with Excel uh, under, under formats. Uh, I'm sorry, under um, design or layout, you can specify grid lines, uh, how you want your axis labeled and things like that. Now, if you want to move your axis somewhere else besides on the left side or besides at the bottom, you can do that. Uh, so if I want to move, for example, my, uh, my, my Y axis, for some reason, I want to move it over here at the one second mark, I can do that. Uh, I just hover over it, right click, format the axis, uh, not the title, okay. Hover over where it says vertical value axis, right click, format axis, and okay, I can format how it looks. That's not where I want, okay. I format my X axis, okay, horizontal value axis, right click, format axis. And I can say that I want my y axis to cross my x axis at x equals 1. Okay? So you'll notice what it does is it moves my y axis over at the, at the 1 at x equals 1. This is useful when you're doing that chart uh, because uh, for your, um, for your, uh, for your calorimetry experiment, because if you can put your scale on at the five minute mark, it makes it easier to read. Okay. So uh, that's something you can do. Any questions? All right. Okay, so for the, I guess for the rest of the period, you can just play with Excel and uh, you can um, do your, um, I think pretty much the rest of this is self-explanatory and that should help you out with your next experiment. Okay? All right. Thank you. Bye.
Oh shoot, I forgot to record. Oh boy. Sorry. <laughs> I hope I got the other one rec recording. Okay, I did have the other recording going.